Greetings everyone, David J. Kuhn with Qigong Awareness out here in the park. It's windy, it's a little chilly, but it's a beautiful day. So I wanted to give you one practice for building up your vitality. So there's so any Qigong practice, any Tai Chi practice, any movement that you're doing is going to start developing this sort of thing that we call this thing, non-thing, called chi, called energy. It's a subtle energy. It's not like having uh, Coca-Cola and uh, getting a rush or, or a coffee. It's different. And when you run out of it, especially if you get used to having some of it, when you start to run out of it, you know it. And there's no, the vitamin C isn't going to cut it. The coffee's not going to cut it. You got to go to some of your subtle Qigong practices. So. Uh, let's go ahead and take one hand and we're going to place it with one thumb at the lower rim of the belly button. It doesn't matter which hand, just place one hand at the bottom. You're going to take the other hand, you're going to place it right on top and we're going to go ahead and we're going to hold it here. Okay? Now, when it comes to this subtle thing called vitality, chi, in general it's called chi, I want you to have your feet, by the way, underneath your shoulders roughly knees slightly bent, chin roughly parallel with the floor. Later at home you could do this with me or you could set a timer, set the timer for say three minutes, five minutes, build up to ten minutes a day. Watch what starts happening with this particular exercise. This particular exercise that I'm giving you, which doesn't seem like a whole lot if you don't have its history and you don't know much about it, uh, there's quite a bit to it. Uh, I could go on all weekend about it, <laughs> but I'll start you with, uh, I'll start you with uh, a little practice, a beginning practice, okay? But it's also, uh, you know, over time it's an advanced practice once you know more about it. Okay, this area down here in your lower belly, it is called the lower dantian in Chinese medicine. In Japanese martial arts, we call it the hara, okay? It's a very important area. It is the epicenter of not only health and vitality, but also your own power. So when it comes to martial art and so on, uh, we talk about generating power from this area of our body, okay? So when it comes to the health and vitality though, this is an excellent way to begin the practice. As you stand here with knees slightly bent so that you don't cut off your circulation, or seated on a chair if you're not comfortable standing, you have hip problems, knee problems. This is an excellent practice for you. Just do it while seated. Sit on the edge of the chair, hold your own spine straight so that we can open up the spinal column and let the energy run up the spine. Hold your hands just like this and stand there and be very still for three minutes, five minutes. To begin with, if you are a beginner, which I assume you are, your mind is going to be very busy. And I want you to go ahead and just for a minute, just for a moment anyway, take, take your fingers and tap the top of your head like this. I'm actually not showing you an emotional freedom technique, although it kind of is. And emotional freedom techniques really came out of ancient Chinese medicine. But you're tapping here, right? Okay. But we're not doing it for that reason. I'm saying tap here because that's where all the thinking is going on. You're thinking, you're thinking, you're thinking. Now go ahead right here and just kind of rub or tap or touch the very front of your forehead. This, I like to call this area the control tower. So if I was going to launch an arrow or something, right? And sometimes we do Qigong practices like this, like we're launching an arrow. This is where I'm focusing from. This is the frontal lobe of my brain, very important area. And this is also called upper dantian. This is lower dantian. So what are we doing? We're trying to connect lower dantian, or sometimes also, not to confuse you, but this is in modern medicine being referred to as the second brain. So if you ever hear that reference, uh, we're just now in Western medicine starting to talk about the second brain, uh, whereas Chinese medicine has been talking about it for 5,000 years, but they didn't call it the second brain, they called it the lower dantian. All right, so you have the lower dantian here, you have the upper dantian here, and through our focus of placing our hands here purposefully, 
to this area of our lower belly that is considered a reservoir, a place where you can recharge your batteries. We're placing our focus right there. And by staying there one minute, two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, eventually 10 minutes, for example, we're gonna build up a lot of this subtle energy called chi, which you're not even gonna really know what it is. It's kind of hard to have any even idea what it is until you start having more of it. So this is the exercise that I'm gonna start you with. Now, I told you you could do this seated. I'm also gonna share a little secret with you. You can do this lying down. So I recommend start doing this in the morning when you wake up, start doing this before you go to bed at night. Very, very important practice. This lower reservoir again, lower dantian. In Japanese martial arts, we call it the hara. We move from the hara, and this is where our, all of our power comes from if we were going to throw, for example, example or if we were going to punch in certain other martial arts the punching and so on it's coming from this area so is the healing guys so place your hands here start doing this hit me up on YouTube let me know how it's working for you if you have any other questions so that we can keep moving you forward with your practice but this is a beginning place to start don't underestimate it because if you come train with me in the future on some weekend program where we're training all weekend I promise you you're gonna be spending time doing this and at first it seems physically challenging to do it especially if you're standing in other words imagine doing this two minutes well that's a little challenging but then imagine doing it 20 those of you who've done it 20 know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a weird kind of feeling in your body. There's different sorts of uh, discomfort and emotional sort of pain and stuff that comes up. But the beauty is, and the reason we do it, is we do it to clear not only the body, but to clear the mind. Remember I said, uh, upper dantian, what do we have up here in our head? It's called our first brain, right? What do we have here in our gut? It's called our second brain. Those are like computers, guys. Those are like hard drives. Imagine your computer is so full of stuff, you just can't put anything new in it. What would you do? Well, you might get a new computer, but in this case, we can't get a new computer. But what we can do is wash the computer clean. In Zen practices, for example, we call this open, getting to a place of Zen mind or clear mind. It begins with a practice like this, and this is a practice that builds up your vitality and clears out the emotional baggage and gives you that mental clarity all at the same time. So don't underestimate it, check it out. And if you're looking to make Qigong a more regular part of your daily life, check out our 21 day Qigong challenge. It's not super challenging. It's like 10 minutes every day. You can do it 21 days in a row if you want. And I have several people that I've spoken to recently who've been doing it much longer than that. They're on like their third or fourth month of just repeating it, repeating it, repeating it since I filmed it you'll have ongoing access to that content so you don't have to worry about it uh, going away on you either. So um, check that out. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next video.